Welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast, inspiring real women with a passion for fishing and the outdoors to go get their adventure on. Now, here's your fearless host, Angie Scott. This week on the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast, I'm proud to welcome Jerry Meyer, owner of the Driftless Angler Fly Shop in southwestern Wisconsin, as well as the Women's Fly Shop online at womensflyshop.com. Really, I was introduced to you, of course, through Jen and Heather yeah. in their Redfish Roadie Road Trip. The first oh. time I ever met them was they started off in Nashville on their first trip. We did an interview there, and you know, Jen was kind of telling me about their trip and some of the destinations that they were going to be hitting up. And one of the areas she mentioned was the Driftless. And I had never heard of that area before, so it sounded really interesting to me. And then... I watched the documentary after everything, you know, was all over and I saw you in it and I was like, oh my gosh, she, she's amazing. I don't even know her and I feel like we're friends. <laughs> I know. Jen said the same about you. Oh. Like, oh, she looks cool as hell. Yeah. <laughs> well, cool. So, so I guess that was one of the stops on that trip and I kind of wanted to talk about that area because that's where you're located. And uh, you have the Driftless Angler Fly Shop and also the online women's fly shop. But um, tell tell our listeners, because we've, we've only mentioned it a couple times on the show, just a little bit about the Driftless, because it's, like I said, it's a really unique area. It is a very unique area. It is an area in the Midwest. So we are in southwest Wisconsin, <clears throat> and it's a pretty good chunk of the southwestern corner of Wisconsin and the a teeny, teeny sliver of the southeastern corner of Minnesota and then northeastern corner of Iowa, a, a pretty good chunk as well, and then uh, northwestern corner of Illinois, just a teeny sliver. So it's a, it's a chunk of, of land in the Midwest that, has, that was unglaciated. So when the um, last glaciers came through there was this portion that did not actually get glacier and what when the glaciers rub on earth it's it's called drift so it creates sediment and rock and you know it's scouring and this section did not have that and so water continued to flow and there were these uh, valleys and they call them coolies uh, i think like french fur traders coined that term that these were coolies hmm. so they're just little gulches and gullies and rivers <clears throat> and there's just a ton of them and so fresh water continued to to uh come up through springs so these are all spring fed it's mm. spring fed in, in our area so they're all spring creeks so they're all street to sidewalk size teeny little very intimate meandering creeks and or streams um not a ton of current so they're but but still, because of the chemistry and because of how they've been formed, temperature stays consistent. And so it's just great trout habitat. Lots of bugs and, and lots of, of all wild trout. So very, very little, pretty much no stocking in the area that I'm in. All wild fish, browns and brook trout. And uh, it's pretty spectacular. Wow. Well, cool. Yeah. So, yeah, so I see why fly anglers are definitely attracted to that area. <laughs> right, right. It's kind of a hidden gem. It's, um, you know, not, not as much as when we came. I, there's good and bad to that. But, you know, I, Trout Unlimited has done a ton of work. Uh, the state of Wisconsin especially, there is so much public water, so much public water, public land. Um, and we're very grateful and completely reliant upon that. So the fact that in our area, we've got so many streams and just a ton of it has access. So that is a great thing for us. Yeah. So I know farming is pretty big up there in Wisconsin. Has that had much effect on the area? Right. There's been lots of, of farming practices that have been amended and changed. Um, contour farming um, <clears throat> has definitely, you know, made a big difference between so, I mean, there's a lot of hills, a lot of valleys. The topography is, um, sort of, it's karst in that there are lots of underground rivers and so caves and so a lot of drainage. Had it not been for that switch in farm practice and, and not just, I mean, it's, we're not, it's not perfect, but there, mm -hmm. you know, there constantly has to be 
change, right? And and not to say that mineral water is very, very clean. It's very clean, but, eh, you know, there's it's a right to farm state, and that's a great thing. However, there's a cost to that, too. So I don't want to paint any pictures that it's become perfect. The DNR has done a ton of work. Trout Unlimited has done a ton of work to work with with the farming community to make it so yeah we're constantly trying to have to balance and so yeah yeah it there's it is definitely a big focus and so are there other other than trout is there other fish that you can target in in that area not so much in the driftless. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, suckers for sure. <laughs> not a lot of people, not a lot of people target suckers. Right. They do actually when, yeah, right before they spawn when they're kind of crazy. That's kind of fun, but oh, we don't really target them, but <clears throat> that can be fun. I don't mind a sucker. <laughs> um, but no, about an hour away, uh, actually 45 minutes from here, we can get to the Mississippi. Okay. A little bit further, we can get to the Wisconsin. So, both of those, and we do. We actually were fishing the Mississippi the day before yesterday, on Sunday, and had a blast. Northern uh, and uh, bath, lar- bass, large mouth, large mouth for the most part, and panfish. Um, we do have some ponds around here that we'll go fish for pan panfish with our kids too. That's tons of fun. Cool. Well, I saw that. Uh, I think I read somewhere that you like to fish for muskie as well. Oh, I do. I do like musky. <laughs> Anything toothy, I really do. Um, musky, and I do equally as much like northern pike, um, mm-hmm. but musky just because they're so elusive. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so then, and for us, that's, hmm, well, we can find some a little over an hour, hour and a half away. Normally, we go up north, up to um, up to Hayward area, mm-hmm. and I fish with my girlfriend, Wendy Williamson, who's a guide there, and she's amazing. So that's typically what I do when I, she's a musky guide and she's somebody you should get on the show. She's amazing. Yeah. Well, so I've, I've been doing the show for a little over two years now and I feel like I've said this many, many times. So one of my bucket list fish is a musky and I still have not got my first musky. So, um, I, you know, being from up north, but for yeah. whatever reason, we just never, that was just, we were always walleye fishing and so every now and then, like one of my uncles would get a muskie, not on purpose, you know, and uh, that just never happened for me. So, so down in Tennessee, there's actually a, a decent muskie fishery out east a little ways called Melton Hill. And I took mm-hmm. a guide out there, and then we, I mean, we spent the entire day just cast after cast. Of course, I'm conv- oh. I'm a conventional angler. Um, yeah, right. Which Jen probably mentioned that was kind of the yeah. the big thing on the redfish roadie road trip was right, fly versus right. conventional, <laughs> which is so cool. <laughs> yeah, it was su- so cool. super fun. And you know, that's something we keep bringing up too is like, why is there such a separation between fly anglers and conventional <sighs> anglers? But that's uh, another show. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's a whole other thing. I know. It's absolute nonsense. Yeah. But yeah, so I still have to get my first muskie. So maybe I need to go up to Hayward. <laughs> yes. Wendy, Wendy Williamson. Wendy, uh, and if you go further, well, I don't know where Gnome would go. You know Gnome. Do you know Gnome? I have. Yeah. We've had Gnome yeah. on the show. She came to Nashville uh, yeah. maybe a year and a half or so ago, and I met up with her and um, talked about, she had an article that was coming out and done about one of her recent trips. And so we talked about that and that was cool. So she, yeah, she used to guide in Michigan and, um, <clears throat> and I think the UP when she would do her musky, uh, her musky guiding, I don't know whether she, whether she comes back and does that, but yeah, I would definitely say just knowing Wendy's there for sure. And she is, she's a musky queen. She's, now, does she fish for a, him on the fly? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, yeah, she used to be a trout guide. And I think now for 20 some years, maybe 30, she's, um, she has, she and her husband have the Hayward Fly Fishers and um, Fly Fishing Company. And she is just spectacular. Plus, she's just a pile of fun. Awesome. <clears throat> well, yeah. Well, I, you know, catching muskie, I think conventionally is one thing. I think on the fly is probably a, a totally different experience. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> uh, it's, you know, I mean, it, wow, muskie, 
I mean, what do they say? It's the fish of a thousand casts? Yeah, 10,000 10, yeah. 10, casts. 10,000 casts, yep. right, right, right. <clears throat> so, and I mean, that's not a, that's not a huge exaggeration. <laughs> it, can be, <laughs> it can be tough, but if you, and you have fly fished before, it's just not your jam. Yeah, I mean, very, very little. Like, I I took a lesson out on the Caney Fork a few years oh, ago. Yeah. And then yeah. then on the Redfish Roadie Road Trip, I did uh, practice a little bit with the ladies at the community casting yeah. event. And then I did get to catch my first fish on the fly out with a guide. Ooh. Yeah, the next day. So that was cool. It was, it was fun. Uh, I had no yeah. idea what I was doing, but I managed to catch <laughs> it. <laughs> well, I... I truly, I have no idea what I'm doing when I fish conventionally. I, I feel like it's just a shit show. Like, I just don't know. I'm like, when do I flip this? What do I, like, how can it be that, that hard? I'm sure it may again go back to this brain, but it's so small and so full. Um, but I, I feel like one day we should have a huge conclave of women and fly fishing and conventional fishing. I talked to Cheryl Smith. Yes. In yeah. Chicago, who I, yeah, I just think she's amazing. She is. She, we talked about this when we were in Chicago about having like a big group <clears throat> and have the fly anglers help the conventional anglers and the conventional anglers help the fly anglers like who want to try, you know, the opposite way of fishing and just go have a blast. Yep. I feel like that would be a good thing. And I'm, maybe Nashville's our place and maybe hey. a karaoke boat is yes. our vessel. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. It's going to be, going to be a uh, 20. Uh, five foot this year, so it'll hold a good group of people, pretty good size. So yeah, oh, God, that would be a blast. <laughs> that would be fun. Wouldn't that be so fun. Oh, Jen yeah, cracks me up because she's like, I don't even know what the these bait casters. I don't even understand how you even work one of those. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It's so funny how how different it is. But yeah, that would be fun to just mix it up. From billion-dollar ad budgets and arena naming rights to tens of thousands of retail locations, big wireless providers spend big to appear like they're your only option. How do they afford it all? <laughs> that big bill you get at the end of every month. Mint Mobile had a different idea. Instead of brick-and-mortar overhead, Mint Mobile is online only. What does that mean for you? A whole lot of savings because wireless plans from Mint Mobile start at just $15 a month. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for just $15 a month. You'll save enough that you can get a brand new rod and reel for the upcoming season. For anyone who just hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan, and you can even keep your same phone number along with all of your existing contacts. By going online only and eliminating traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash waypoint. That's mintmobile.com slash waypoint. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash waypoint. Yeah, I would, I would love to learn more. I sincerely would love to learn more. And I do, you know... I don't have, for me, in the, such a small area, I just don't have a huge group of of women, of female anglers, mm -hmm. fly or otherwise. And I would, yeah, I would really like to know more about conventional fishing. I really would. Yeah, like like Jen says, fishing is fishing and fishing is supposed to be fun. So that's, yeah. that's what it's all about. Right. So speaking of right. fun, I came across some, so tell me about this um, pink squirrel. <laughs> so um it's kind of a midwest staple it's our commodity fly okay. um, we we so a gentleman um a little town just six miles away from here his name is john bethke he invented this pattern and it's it's just kind of like a all around it can be an attractor it can be like a caddis i you know i don't know that he has a specific you know what it's supposed to imitate <clears throat> but he did say that he was fishing like a fuzzy nymph and the fish kept hitting a bright 
pink indicator. Mm -hmm. So like a bobber. We're so, yeah, the snobby word for a bobber. (laughs) Um, So yeah, we're fishing and he he said said it just kept, fish kept hitting it. So he decided he was going to tie a little chenille collar around his fuzzy nymph and called it a pink squirrel. And then we, uh, we had, uh, we sold a ton of them and it's kind of our, it is our number one selling wow. fly. And I have fished it all. I've actually fished it all over the world. I've fished it everywhere I go. I fish it and the damn thing catches fish. <laughs> I mean, man, that thing catches fish anywhere I go. It's just, yeah, it's a crazy. It's so, well, then a guy, I can't even think how long ago, but some guy taxidermied a squirrel. And, um, I don't, he must have bleached it and then dyed it pink, brought it to John to his house and his wife wouldn't let him keep it. Just get that thing out of here. So he brought it to us and it's kind of our mascot in our shop. We've got our, (laughs) we call him Pinky. And, um, yeah, so it's a, we have t-shirts and hats that (laughs) have big squirrels. It's just a thing. That's yeah. cool. Well, we, I don't know if when you were in New Orleans on the redfish, which I hate that I missed, missed I meeting you. <laughs> I know, just by a couple of days. I know. Yeah. I think I had just left and, uh, I wish, I wish I could have stayed, but we, we played a game and I don't know if you guys did this in New Orleans. I think you did the charades with the different fly names. Did, oh, it did. was so fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, Jen and Heather set that up. It was ridiculous. That was so much fun. Yeah, and fly names are <laughs> hilarious anyways. But oh. it was so funny when I played it. The first card I got, I was reading the description of the fly, like what it's used for, and not uh-huh. the fly name. So <laughs> I oh, I read... So that's what you were acting out? Yeah, <laughs> which it was like, how in the world do you do this? That's so complicated. So what I read was bass surface. <laughs> I'm like, how do I how do I act bass? up bass surface? And what kind of a name is that anyways? Well the fly right. was the pole dancer. <laughs> which would have been so easy. Way easier. <laughs> Way easier than bass surface. So I did I, I somehow managed to get them to say bass surface. <laughs> and then oh, someone was gosh. like Wait a second. I don't think that's the name of the fly. <laughs> it was the pole da- dancer. And I was like, oh, man, that would have been so easy. <laughs> but that game was tons of fun. So much fun. I, I can only imagine what it would be like to hang out with you and Jen and oh. Heather all at the same time. Oh. It got a little wild, but it was, oh, it was such a hoot. It was just. Oh, it was so much fun. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll get a chance sometime to all get together. And uh, if not in Nashville doing punting karaoke, somewhere else. <laughs> yes. But, yes. But we, we will try to make that happen. I think that would be a blast. Oh, I agree. I think that would be an absolute blast. I would love that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being um, on the Woman Angler and Adventure podcast. And, thank you. My absolute pleasure. Thank and, uh, you we'll, so much. We'll definitely catch up. Um, you thank know, you. this is a obviously a crazy time. Everyone keeps saying that. Hopefully things yeah. are starting to come, come back around. Right. Um, I know it's, it's certainly put a lot of things into perspective for me. I don't know if you've kind of feeling the same way, but. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I think there is a lot of positive that's going to come out of this after all is said and done. Yep. I really hope so. I really hope that uh, for me personally, you know, taking for granted, man, and just getting to fish with a girlfriend, Mm -hmm. getting to go out for 20 minutes, even with a girlfriend Oh, or any friend for that matter. But, you know, I'm, yeah, that I will cherish from now on. (laughs) Yep. I I agree. So, so yeah, when we can all get together, that's, it's just going to be a big time. Right and, and a lot of fun. So, yes. Thanks again. I'll encourage everybody oh. to check out the Driftless Angler. Um, Thank maybe you. Maybe place some online orders. Um, get yeah, some- Women's Fly Shop. The um, Women's Side A. I'm that one is still. I, I don't know if anybody knows about that, but this that we sell uh, women's fishing gear, um, waders, boots, jackets, all that kind of stuff too. Mm-hmm. And that that's been doing well. I think a lot of, a lot of women now were just yeah ramping up trying to get ready to get back out again so yep and in a lot of ways you can still do that if you're in a certain area i guess some areas you can't but um yeah i do think a lot of people are 
you know, shopping online and stuff right now. So, yeah. so that's a great thing. So we'll definitely encourage people to go to that website and yeah, uh, check you out on social media. I know you mentioned, and I think in Jen's interview, or maybe it was the Fly Fishing Insider podcast interview, but not being a huge fan of social media. I can... Oh, I hate it. <laughs> it is I a, hate it. I get it's its value, pain, isn't it? <laughs> you know what? It's just, I don't know. I just have, I just, oh, I, do, I don't welcome it at all. And I, I like other people's involvement. I just, my personal involvement, I just, ugh. Yeah. No, I just, I have to get better, but no, I'm terrible with social media. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think, I think we all just need to he- hire Heather Hodson to do all our for social real. Media. For <laughs> real. For real. God, I wish she could do a it. tenth of what she does. A tenth, a hundredth of what she does. I know. I agree. They brought me <sighs> along insane. to help with social media and I felt like Heather was doing like, that was my sole job. <laughs> <laughs> she had Heather doing, had it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With time to spare. She's like, oh, no. I'm yeah. Gonna... <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, just, yeah, a whiz, I, I guess. I got that I done know. at 530 this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yep, <Yeah>. exactly. <laughs> so, I anyway, all right. Well, I'm going to let all let you get on with your day, but thank you so thank much you. again. It was oh. a pleasure talking to you, and I uh, can't thank wait you. to meet in person sometime. Me too. Thanks a lot. <laughs>